Okay, uh, gear. I know I promised you a gear video, so here goes. Uh, this is pretty much everything, including a little bit of food. Not a whole lot of food there. Start with the packs. Uh, I have two. Uh, I'll probably use this one. This is a Rayway pack. I made this. Uh, Rayway refers to uh, Ray Jardine. He's an ultralight guy and he sells kits and this is uh, one of his kits. This is on the smaller end. This is 2400 cubic inches. This one, I, I made this five years ago, I think. Yeah, five years ago. Works really well. This is smaller. This is 2200. Smaller. Um, I'll use this, but I really like the way this hangs on me. I can. I'm 85-90% I'm sure I'm going to start with this one. And when I transition to warmer weather equipment, everything will fit in here nicely and I'll, and I'll move over to this guy. I, obviously, I made him too. Uh, I'm going to use a pack liner. Pretty sure. I don't think I'm going to take a pack cover. This is a trash compactor bag. Everything goes in here. And then this goes in there. And it's all sealed. I sleep in a hammock. This is a uh, War Bonnet is the company, and the model is the Blackbird. Uh, so single layer they sell them with double layers, so you can put a pad under. I got a single layer from some guy on Hammock Forums, Superman, and I like this because it only weighs a pound. It's 1.0 single layer. It's got a full bug net. The Blackbirds, they have some little, a little shelf you can store stuff inside the hammock. And for a pound, you can't beat that. Uh, the suspension I have is just, uh, what are these? These are called dog bands. It's some Dyneema with two block brummels on each end, and one end's wrapped around the hammock, and then the straps. These are, I got these from Dutch. I'll uh, have a link below for, for Dutch's place. Uh, these are his Kevlar straps with uh, his Dutch clips and they're, and they're connected, connected there. And uh, these work really well. Uh, my insulation. Insulation will go into this bag. I made this. This is Cuban fiber. More about Cuban fiber later. Uh, this is uh, the under quilt. This is from Hammock Gear. I did not make this. This is their uh, Phoenix, I think. Zero degree Phoenix. Works amazing. And so that's my under quilt. I have one ordered um, a 40 degree version for when the weather turns. That has not gotten here yet. I entrust Hammock Gear that it'll be fully 40 gear. I mean 40 degrees. This is my top quilt. I did not make this, however, I did modify it. This used to be a big rectangular, just a big rectangle like this. And I never used it for anything other than a top quilt, so I decided to turn it into a, a full-time top quilt. I, uh, the bottom three baffles here, I, I took five inches off of each side, sewed this up, made this thing here for the end, and stuffed it with some some goose down that I had upstairs and then in addition when I did that it was too long for me there was a whole another chamber out here so I harvested the down out of that chamber and distributed it over the top three remaining chambers so these are kinda overstuffed kinda kinda not uh, I put I stole some uh, this little clip from a pair of uh, fleece mittens that I had because I never clip them together and this uh, clips around your, your neck here like that and I added some shock cord in this channel and this works really well it just keeps it all tucked in around around your neck and on the sides uh, and I've had this set up these two boy I, I'm pretty sure I've had them down to single digits and been toasty warm and the tarp this is my tarp. This is just uh, this is Cuban fiber. 
This is just uh, Sergeant Rock's Cuban fiber tarp from his video. I'll put a link down below. Sergeant Rock is awesome. So I use a continuous ridge, continuous ridge line. I have one of Dutch's wasps on the other end. It's a very little piece of titanium. It makes it uh, very easy to tie it off and keep it nice and snug. My tie outs are Dutch tarp worms. Those things are amazing. I love those little things. Uh, I'll put a link to a video of, of Dutch's tarp worms. So here's the quilts in their stuff sack. And uh, this goes in here. Like that. And now I gotta jam it in here. Trust me, it fits. Uh, the under quilt is not a full length under quilt. So I have this piece of foam uh, to fill in the gap for my feet. And, and then this does double duty in that this will go behind all this stuff. And that gets jammed in the pack and then I have that pad against my back in case I miss pack something and there's a hard piece of metal or something jamming into my back. I don't feel it because it's in that. So let me get this in the pack and then I'll show you how that looks. Okay, so that's in, that's in the pack now. Everything's honky dory. Now, clothing. Uh, this is my clothing bag, my stuff sack. I made that. Socks. Uh, I used to hike in really heavy woolen socks. These are smart wool. They're very nice. Um, but I think I'm having a change of thought. Uh, and I'm going with sort of a, a system. These are Right socks, W-R-I-G-H-T-S-O-C-K. And these are a synthetic sock. You can hike in these if you want. I'm going to use them as like a liner. And then uh, these lighter, these lighter smart wools on top. And uh, that's been working really well the last few times I've been out. Uh, so I'll be wearing a pair of those and packing a pair. Uh, these are sleeping socks. They're, they're heavier and you chain them out. They're dry, they're warm at night. Of course, that's not necessary once the weather turns. They'll be in, so they will live in there. These are my undershorts, icebreaker, wool. Uh, I'm really fond of wool. It's crazy expensive, but if you just wait till the price is right and just accumulate them over time, which is how I got all this wool. I didn't go out and buy all the wool. Just waited till they advertised them at my price. Uh, real lightweight. Uh, and the wool really manages the sweat and moisture very, really well. So there'll be, you know, one pair in there and I'll be wearing a pair. Uh, I have a wool t-shirt. This is also for my breaker. Got it for a great price. You just got to be patient with this stuff. So I'll be wearing this or something something similar. I'll show you the warm weather clothing system later. That'll be on me. Uh, then um, I wear these. This is a Patagonia wool pullover, long sleeve. Uh, once you're moving with this, you can be out there in pretty cold temperatures and be comfortably cool. Phone's ringing. I'm not going to answer it. And then I have same thing, smart wool. So I'll be wearing one of these and the other one will be packed in the clothing sack. Okay. Pants. I have two pairs. Convertible I guess they're just nylon, nothing fancy. Um, and I don't know, I'm, I'm really torn if I'm going to carry two sets of clothes or wear one set and have the other set in my bounce box and then, you know, once I get into town, I have town clothes to wear and then I just switch them out and the other one gets laundered and it goes to the bounce box and gets bounced up the trail someplace. So, um, one of these will be in the stuff sack, in the clothing sack, and the other one I'll be wearing. 
clothing, clothing, clothing. Oh, uh, my puffy shirt. I made this. This is a uh, pullover, insulated pullover from thruhiker.com. Very good stuff. I got made several things from that guy. He'll take really good care of you. This will probably spend a lot of time in here. If it's really cold out, it'll be in the pack, but outside this guy. So that'll be in there. And of course, this stuff sack, I made the stuff sack, of course. <clears throat> Forgot my long underwear. So here's my long underwear. Uh, these are icebreaker wool. Again, I got them at a great price. Just wait until the price is right. These uh, work really well. They're just a lightweight wool, uh, and they keep me nice and warm at night. And I will probably, it wouldn't surprise me if these go the whole trip with me. Just because in the summer when I transition to, to short pants, when I transition to short pants, um, I'll keep these along just if it's cold in the morning, put these on, and then put the, the shorts on top. So these are probably going to go the whole way with me. That goes in there. All right. This is my rain jacket. In the wintertime, it's wind protection. This I'll have the whole trip. I got this for Christmas. But it's lightweight. I think it's uh, under 12 ounces. Compact. It uh, rolls up reasonably compact. And like I said, this will be with me for the duration. That will live in the outside pocket. Oh, there's no pair of socks. Uh, gloves. I just got these gloves here a few weeks ago. They're by a company called Cirrus. They're a fleece, but they're also waterproof. And in, in the, the winter, uh, that also equates to being windproof, which was a big deal for me. And they're, eh, they're okay. I like them. It was money decently spent. So they're reasonably warm, waterproof, and windproof. I also have these uh, mittens I got. Uh, they weigh less than air. These are waterproof mittens. Also windproof, so I get double wind protection for that. And they will be outside the pack. These are gaiters. Gaiters are things that go in the bottom part of your leg down there. Uh, for snow, mainly I got them for snow, but I guess when it turns warm, if I want to try and keep my feet dry, they can, I don't know, they're waterproof. So the, the quilts are in, then the clothing goes in. Like that. Hammock goes inside. I don't want my hammock getting wet. I can see how some people, where some people would just keep the hammock outside. I don't know. I don't want that thing. I don't want sleeping in a wet hammock. That wouldn't be cool. This is uh, toiletries and, and first aid stuff. Toilet paper. There's some liquid soap. My, I'm mildly asthmatic, there's an inhaler, ah, there's some band-aids and moleskin. What's this? I'll look at that later. There's some uh, foot cream the doctor gave me if I get that leaps foot. Ibuprofen, a couple more band-aids. What is this? Oh, this is uh, a little sack. I made this bag. Of course, I made this one. This is a toothbrush. There's a little tube of toothpaste in there. A little tube of toothpaste and some uh, some chapstick in case I get chapsticks. So that's toiletries, first aid. And then there'll be another one, some similar to that for my meds. That goes in there. This is what is this? I made this. Oh, this is stuff. So what's in here? Some some hand warmers. I'll probably get a couple of them to take along. Earplugs. Uh, here's some line if I need to run a line to hang stuff and when I'm in a motel 
Uh, when I do laundry, I don't dry my wool stuff because dryers will shrink it like crazy. So I figure I'll wash it hanging on this line. And I'll have some uh, clothes pins in my bounce box that'll be there too. What's that? That's a little electrolyte mix. Uh, my headlamp. Uh, this is my headlamp. Weighs less than an ounce. Uh, doesn't put out a crazy amount of light. I had one of these, uh, but it doesn't put out a whole lot of light. Just enough to do camp chores. I've hiked at night with it. <laughs> it's kind of dicey. And it has a emergency and a red emergency and a solid red. But, um, it's sealed, so if I dunk this in water, this can be under a meter a meter of water for 30 minutes and it'll be okay. Water treatment. These are my water containers. I like platypus stuff. It doesn't... Some of the other containers, I think, give the water a funky taste. Platypus does not. So I'm real fond of these two liter bottles. Uh, but in the, when it's cold, I've had issues with this and my filtration, so I'll get to that. This is a Nalgene. Typical Nalgene, big thing. I, I'll, I probably won't carry this once it uh, turns warmer. I keep this because of the big opening. Uh, when it's really cold at night, I can I can boil a liter of water, pour it in there, and then you uh, throw this in the in the quilt with you, and it, a lot of heat, and that'll really help. Uh, and because of the freezing, a couple of weeks ago, I got this platypus bladder because um, it has this big opening I can scoop out the water. It's okay. It's a little heavy. A little heavier than it really needs. It's certainly a lot heavier than, than just the bottle. And it has, you know, this thing on it and then, you know, this plugs into that. It has this stupid right angle uh, bite valve that you can turn on and off. I don't know. Uh, now the reason I went with that stuff is because I used to, no I still do I guess, I don't know, I'm not 100% sure here, but I filtered my water. So I use a, a Sawyer water filter and it's, uh, I rigged up this gravity system where you collect water in this bag. I made this obviously. You collect water in this bag. Uh, you hang this from a tree. You hook this into the dirty end and then I have another piece of uh, silicone tubing uh, that you hook that into the clean end and then it has a, a cap for this thing and you just set that all up and let it do its thing and then you go about your business and a couple minutes later you got two liters of drinkable water. Um, but <laughs> you never get the water, all the water out and this thing froze. <laughs> so I was out there trying to get water and, and this was frozen and trying to warm this up. That was bad. So I decided to try chemical treatments. And um, let me get to that right here. I went with... <clears throat> Oh, and I keep these in, in separate bags to try to avoid uh, cross-contaminating the dirty water with the clean water. Everything else is clean. And I, man, I'm really uh, torn here because I like the filter. But if you go with the chemical stuff, here, here's your whole system right here, these two little bottles. This is Aquamira. And the one bottle has a little mixing cap on it. You put, for a liter of water, you put eight drops of this and eight drops of that. And let that sit for five minutes. Go collect your liter of water. And five minutes uh, later, you pour that into the water and shake it up. And a half hour later, it's drinkable. Uh, and it says it doesn't impart any kind of a chemical flavor. And that's pretty much true. So I may end up replacing all of this with this. The only downside is there's no filter. So you'll get little bits in there, like little twigs and little pieces of broken um, 
broken leaves, you know, any, any kind of floaties in there. And I don't know how much of an issue that will be. So for the short term, I got three weeks to decide that. This will live outside, right there. Okay, now what? Ah, uh, what else goes outside there? Here's a trowel for when I gotta drop anchor. I like these shepherd hooks. I got these from Dutch. These are his burly stakes, very heavy duty, good stuff. And I have them in this little stuff sack here. I made that. Uh, an extra pair of glasses. Uh, this is in case I take a header and these things fly off. I read an article in Backpacker Magazine about a guy who was out in the back country at Yosemite way all by himself and he fell down, lost his glasses. He had a fe uh, heavy prescription like I have and he couldn't see. I mean, that's a survival situation. So um, from now on, I'm carrying an extra pair of glasses. This is my bear bag uh, hanging thing. Uh, this is my rock sack. I made this. This is just some of the mesh left over from the last from the last pack that I made. It had some of this uh, mesh. And what you do is you put a rock in there and throw it over a tree branch. And this is 30 feet of uh, of line. And then you haul your your food bag up in the air. And the bears don't steal your food. And you do that. If you're camping here, you do that way over there. <laughs> so that the bears come snooping around for your food, they're over there snooping around. Uh, and then towels. These are various towels. Uh, this is to wash myself with. This one is to dry myself with. This one's pretty big. Plenty big to dry off. And this one is the one that I hang from. I'll hang that from from this uh, loop here for when I, in the summertime when I get real sweaty and sweat like crazy. I gotta keep that sweat out of my eye. So that one will live there. These two will live inside. Alright. Okay, food bag. I like these Osprey food bags. In fact, in fact, a new one just came. Um, I like these because they have a rectangular bottom. You should get oval bottom ones, but that was a pain to work with. And uh, this one was way big. Uh, so I decided to try this one. This is 20 liters, this is 12. So, you know, I never, I shouldn't say never, I never need 20 liters. But anyway, and one of the things that I, besides the rectangular bottle, which is very useful, for some reason I can really purge the air out of these Osprey dry sacks. Really. Because most other, the, the round ones and the elliptical shaped ones, they always ended up with a big bag of air. Well, this one, you know, there's still some air there, but trust me, I got a lot more of the air out of these, uh, these Osprey bags. And I'm anxious to try this little one. I'm, I'm hoping this is enough. I'm hoping that's all I need. That'll go inside. I'll put that in last. This is my clean, dry spot. It's just a piece of uh, polyethylene drop cloth for, for when you're painting. Four mils thick. Um, you can get a, I get a piece of this, I think it's nine feet by 12 feet for about 10 bucks. And this piece is a scrap that I had, I think it's three feet by uh, 41 inches or something. It's plenty big. So you don't need a lot. And what I do is uh, make camp and then I spread this out. Let me show you. I spread this out on the ground underneath the hammock. Then I have, then I have a clean, dry spot, and everything rests on. You know, I throw my pack on there, and I unpack everything. It's all on this clean, dry spot. So if the ground's wet and muddy, my stuff stays clean and dry. 
If the ground's covered in snow, my stuff stays clean and dry. So there's my clean and dry spot. And that lives, obviously, out here. This is the book, the AT Guide. That will live out here. Great book, by the way. I like this is the book to get. That'll live out there because it's in a sealed bag. Okay. Trekking poles. Uh, these are my trekking poles. I got these because we went on a trip one time. I used to use adjustable trekking poles and I liked two piece adjustable rather than three pieces because then you only had to adjust one piece. But we, we went on a trip and we had to pack it away to, to get on the airplane and, and the two piece didn't collapse small enough to fit in any bag. Uh, so after that trip I went looking and I got these. Uh, and they work great. Obviously, they, they pack up like that, very small. And you just pull them out, and then there's a little push button right there, and that's it. Now, they're not adjustable. Oh, well, gee. I used to set my trekking poles at 125 centimeters. These are 120 centimeters. It took me about five steps to get used to that change, and guess what? I don't miss the, the adjustment feature at all. So those are my trekking poles. These are lighter too. Uh, I didn't think I'd notice the weight. These weigh, I think, 12 ounces for the pair of them. And if you want to spend another 50 bucks, uh, they have a carbon fiber version of these that weigh, I think, nine ounces for the pair, I think. But I didn't think I'd notice the, the less weight, but I did. So if you want to spend some money, this might be worthwhile spending money on. Lighter weight uh, trekking poles. Uh, here's a zip bag. I will keep all my electronic stuff in here. My phone charger, any cables, uh, maybe some backup batteries, and that'll live in here. Uh, the food bag, oh, cooking, cooking. Uh, I used to use alcohol, uh, and alcohol's great and everything, and I may, once it turns warm, I may transition to alcohol. I have scads of alcohol stoves in, in the other room there that I made. But in the winter, alcohol is not very heat efficient. It doesn't throw out a lot of heat. And you need heat, and you need it quick. Uh, so I got a jet boil. So this is my jet boil. Uh, jet boils are really cool. They, uh, all they do is boil water, and they do it really well. But what I like about them is even though they are heavy, it's a system, and, it, and it's a system that fits together. I don't have any of the smaller fuel canisters, but everything fits in. Here's, here's the burner. There's a, a stabilizer. You put these legs out, and your fuel canister fits on there like that, and then it's a lot more stable. And everything fits inside. That's what's in there. And this is my dish rag, towel, kitchen towel, whatever, that goes in there. And then even with the towel, one of the smaller fuel canisters will fit in there and then the lid goes on top. And it has uh, this little keeper here for utensils. Uh, I'm real fond of these. This is a human gear go bites uh, thing I found because it's nice and long and it's a spoon, not one of those stupid sports that work really bad at both functions. Just Give us a break, give us a fork and a spoon. But I really like this. And it packs up nice and small. And it fits in this thing. And for a knife, it fits in there. And it, see, it fits within. Uh, I was over at the thrift store yesterday, the Goodwill store or whatever. And uh, I got this kitchen knife for, so actually, I got two knives for 70 cents. And then I just cut the end of it off and rounded it off because I wanted a serrated knife. Sometimes I eat salami and, and uh, you gotta, you know, you gotta work at salami, that will just fall apart for you. Uh, so I cut the edge off so that it would fit here and uh, we'll see how this works. But that'll live right there, like that. Then uh, when it's really cold out, you need a cozy sometimes because I, uh, eat stuff that one of the big
complaints about the jet boil is you can't simmer in it. Well, geez, I don't simmer anything. You just boil water, and that's what this does very efficiently. So I boil the water, throw the food in, give a little stir, bring it back to a boil, put the lid on, and turn it off, and don't touch it for 15 or 20 minutes. Pasta will be done. Rice will be done. But during those 20 minutes, when it's really cold out, you lose heat. So I made this cozy. This is uh, it's called Reflectix. It's an insulator for uh, ductwork in a hot air home heating system. Obviously, I made it. So uh, I boil the water, put the food in, turn it off, put everything in there, put the lid on, forget about it for 15 or 20 minutes. And uh, I will carry two of the smaller canisters with me at all times. One will live in there, and the other one will live outside here. And, and uh, that way, when I empty one, I have one, and then I'll have time to get into a town and get a replacement. And this fits in this side pocket right here, like that. So now the pack's starting to get full. <laughs> uh, what's left? I think that's it. I told you about the tarp. Okay, let's pack it up and see what we got. So I pack up all my clothing and stuff, and then um, that trash compactor bag folds over and keeps everything dry. Fold that all over, like that. Food bag goes on top. Uh, it's a dry bag, so it will stay dry. Cinch that down. Fold everything over. This lives on top. It's a tarp. It's meant to get wet, so it stays outside the pack. And you put that on top. And uh, sometimes, like during the day, uh, I didn't talk about this fleece. This is a Patagonia fleece. I love it. Uh, it's an R1 regulator fleece. Works great. When it when it, when it heats up, you know, i got to take the fleece off, or it's one of those days where every 10 minutes you're putting a layer on or taking a layer off, then that'll live when it's off. That'll live right there. Unless it's raining, of course. If it's raining, it goes in the back. Okay. And that is it. Yeah, 22 pounds. And water. So, so I should be all in with water. Man, I should only be carrying 25 pounds, I think, which is not bad. And then uh, when I transition to uh, warmer weather stuff, my uh, mainly the insulation will change. That that big green quilt weighs I don't know two pounds something. Um, the under quilt weighs 23 ounces. My summer under quilt weighs 11. My summer quilt, which I made, weighs 10 and a half ounces. Yeah. And then I'll be able to transition to that smaller pack because you know, I won't be wearing all the layers. Uh, T-shirts all are sleeveless. My pants are like running shorts. Using the little anklet socks, old nine yards. I'll, I can't wait to get rid of that cozy. Just get it out of there. It's just a pain. And um, as soon as I can, I'm going to transition to that pack because I really like the way that one carries. So that's my gear. I think that's everything.